today, and we will have many things to see. Uh, I've tried to uh, divide it in uh, three uh, main parts. Okay. So we will see how to defend from a bomb weapon using a side sword or a rapier. Okay. Then we will see how to defend against a bomb weapon with a sword and uh, a shield, generic shield. Okay. And the last part we will see how to defend from a bomb weapon with a two-handed sword. Uh, we will see this from the Anonymous Bolognese, mm -hmm. which is 1520. We will see it from uh, Marozzo, which is 1536. Uh, we will see this from uh, Meyer, which is uh, 70, I think. <laughs> and uh, uh, we will also see some other sources that we found, because uh, mixed weapon combinations technique are really common in the treatise. Uh, so you can find, for example, in Fabris, uh, how to defend uh, from uh, bomb weapons using the rapier. You can find it from the second book of Nicoletto Giganti. You can find it uh, in my road, so but will not cover mine. So, uh, you can find it in many, in many treatises. Okay. We will focus on the Bolognese school and on the mayor for uh, a particular reason, I'm sure. So, we will start with uh, side school. So, basically, We have a um, typical side sword, okay? And we are facing a uh, part. My dad. <laughs> yeah. um, we will see the Anonimo, and the Anonimo tells us that uh, this kind of. Uh, it, it, it does not specify that we are going to, uh, to be uh, fighting against a partisan. It just tells against a pole weapon. But we can uh, guess the length of this pole weapon because in order to go to eat the opponent, we will see, you just do more than three steps, okay? So we are speaking about long weapons, okay? So we will see uh, that the first concept I want to, to give to you is uh, that the most important thing to do when you are facing a, a spear and you don't have one is to be sure where the opponent will eat. Because uh, basically you have to uh, restrict the shots that the opponent can give to you. So if I against him with my sword just right in the middle, I'm not, give, I'm not giving any opening. Okay, I don't know where the trust will come from, where the trust will come from. Okay? So it, it will be really difficult for me to defend. So what we see in the treatises is that the masters use guards that have a really uh, good, that give a really good opening to the uh, opening. So the first one that we will see, if you have a side sword, uh, you can just try it, is Porta di Ferro Stretta. So, basically we are in the right lead. We have both the shoulders to walk towards the opening, but the sword is on our left side. Okay, so basically we are giving an opening to our right side. Here I'm sure the opponent will not trust on, this le on the left side. Or if he trusts on the left side, I just don't have to bury I have my sword there. I'm already buried. Okay? So he will probably trust on my right side. Okay? So we will see what happens. The second one that we will see instead is called uh, Coda Longa Stretta. Uh, which, uh, which is uh, on the opposite. So basically the palm is uh, looking down and I'm totally discovering my left side. Okay. So I'm sure the opponent will eat on my left side, not my right side. The anonymo just tells us, moreover, to bring the right foot onward. So we are really giving a good opening to the opponent. Okay. And we will see some techniques from these two shots. So, just another, uh, just uh, another concept. These are techniques that work well uh, against someone who really doesn't know how to uh, use well a spear. Because if I'm uh, fighting against a really experienced opponent, uh, there is no way I will be able to hit him before he hits me. Uh, yeah, okay, we 
will see first the techniques, then I will show you a really good uh, movement, uh, what you will do. So, let's start from Porta di Ferrostretta. What the anonimo says is that when you receive a thrust, you just bury with the false edge in this world. But when you're going to bury, you're not just, you just don't stand still. But you do this. So you step on the left side, just bring the false edge of the sword towards the thrust. Okay? And just do a mezza volta in order to be uh, and to, to have the, the right edge, true edge towards the core. Control the way. Then in Y, when I do this, I also step forward two steps and I'm there. And I have to maintain the control on the opponent's uh, ball okay. uh, in order to avoid him uh, putting, putting aside my, my sword. If the opponent just strikes, uh, just wants to, uh, to go down, okay. so no, no, uh, after, after, uh, uh -huh. after I'm going, so we are, these are those cases that we will see later. Okay. Basically, uh, the anonymous doesn't tell the weapons. Okay. So, if, if he's a good fighter, he will just get rid of me. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you know, you already know. Against every parry, all weapon, once parry, I have to close against the opponent, always. Because the opponent may, may, if he don't rush me, okay, I can go backward and guard it and trust him. Okay. So, uh, this is not told by, by Anonimo, but Marozzo says that in order to succeed in this kind of techniques, uh, you have to, he says, uh, you have to have a uh, heart, you have to be brave, okay, in order to succeed in these techniques. So, let's see it. If he strikes downward, what I do is just the same thing. I, just, I don't go with the false edge, but I just parry this move. In this case, what the anonymous says is that after you have put aside the thrust, okay, just move it aside, you have to uh, step towards this pole, just grab the pole weapon and then rush it. Because I uh, can easily, yes, easily go up more. But he tried to grab my stuff. Okay. I'm done. So basically, these are, these are the two that he does from the, with the right opening. Now I will show you the two that he does from the left from the left opening, and we will try it uh, together. Okay. So on the opposite he is in coda longa stretta, but with the left foot forward. So the end is facing the, the, the palm is facing down. Okay. In this case, this is this is, this is fantastic. What he does when he just is right, he just step out of the line, he just uh, delivers a mandrito to the uh, pole, and then he does an inquartata. And after an inquartata, he also grabs the pole. So what he does is this one, this one, and then oh, just, just the cuts. So, we have to think about something like this. Same thing happens if the thrust is on the legs. So we have in this case, like uh, the other one we have seen, we've seen before, it's this kind of parry. The only one just says to put your sword uh, down, so it will also be up front. And it's just the same uh, tempo as we've seen before. So it's just one, two, two. If I cannot grab, it's just going away. So uh, this is 
is a technique from 1520. There, is, there are some plates of a, of a French master of the 18th century. Pierre Jean François. I don't remember his name. Don't remember. Okay, no, this is a, this is a um, 18th century treaty in which obviously you have a, a different kind of sword. But it's the same, that's a thing. Uh, in this case, it's just. It's just uh, when, they the opponent. when the trusts arrive, what they do is just uh, cover and take down. My other side. My other Then grab. No. And, oh, and reverse. Okay. And another thrust to the <coughs> to the heart. Okay. This is the 18th century technique. So you can see, as you can see, it's just uh, really similar to a uh, 1521. Okay. So, um, so we will show you again all four techniques that will be tried. Okay. Uh, if you need some swords, some science swords, we have some here. Okay. So, from Porta di Ferro Stretta, I trust. So it's just one. It's just falso. Falso. That's all the one. Okay. If it's just on our legs, what I do is just try to throw it. Then, from Coda Longa Stretta with the left foot forward, what I do is just one, two, three. Or even the thrust. Okay. And to the legs. Okay. Okay. So, just let's try this. If you need side words, we have a couple of best Guys. Okay. Let's try this. I want you to notice a common error, obviously, because the, the guard is. Uh, too important to, to ignore it. <laughs> the, the Porta di Ferro Stretta is a very specific, specific guard held this way. In order to discover this part, you can do this and do the same technique, obviously. So you have to do this kind of guard. The end is near, near the knee, but the point is a bit on our left in order to, to open the line and discover the eye part, the upper part. Basically I want that my opponent throws uh, a thrust inside this wood, not outside, not outside. Okay. Because I'm going to bring it outside. Okay. The, the same thing, the, same thing for the, the, the Porta di Ferro Stretta. Coda. Coda, scusate. Coda Longa Stretta. It's this kind of web of uh, guard. So the web is at my right side, not too far, okay, and not too far from me. Quite close. In this case, the point is uh, forward my my opponent's left ear, okay. Not you have not to cross the line. You have to open the line. In this case, it's not so, enough. For, it's not enough. In this case, yeah. it's not denied for the anonymous. Anonymous suggests to offer all the right flank, stepping up, stepping uh, forward with the uh, left foot. So we have our uh, blade on the right, and we are all open on the left flank, and we want it. Okay, it's very important to keep uh, the correct. Uh, Guards. Okay, so he handles the situation with right or left opening. Okay. We will see if we can see a similar kind of concept in the mayor, uh, which uses high and low openings. So basically, in mayor we will see uh, something like six, uh, five or, uh, or six uh, techniques and bases. 
and they are all, almost all from um, uh, Nogar and just one from Nigeria. But the concept is that uh, is that you are in a no guard, okay? So you are completely discovering your uh, upper part, okay? And when the opponent strikes, what I have to do, I have to go under his pole. So what my what they are saying is to move, to put my body and my head aside, okay? And to parry, to put my sword. Under the, uh, under the pole of the, of the opponent, also grab. Okay, and um, it just says that in this way you will just close the opponent after you are after you are there. You just have to chase the opponent, so do not let him uh, strike at you once again. And it also says that. You see, very well that you have to rush him with a, no, with a jump. Yes, he just says that this, this movement should be just a jump. Yo. Uh, even here you have to be brave to do something like this. And also he says that uh, if the opponent, that the opponent can just do one simple thing in order to avoid this kind of situation. And that is just raise the ball. So, if the opponent raises his ball. What I do here is just strike and put once again my ball under his ball. Cover. Gut cover. Okay, so this is the principle. Then in the other techniques it just says that if you are not sure to, to be able to do this kind of thing on the first try, just let him go, uh, let him uh, fail. So basically what you have to do is just retreat and wait. When you close the second one, then you just go under it. Okay. Um, and then he also does the um, same thing, but with an, uh, a low uh, opening. So basically, he just uh, is in a high guard in this case. And uh, the opponent will strike to our legs, obviously. So in this case, what it does is that is that it just moves around the sword and uh, sorry, just so it just moves around the sword okay, and put aside the trust. And from here, if he does if he does another trust, so he recovers another trust. What he does is the same thing as before. He goes under it and it's ready to strike. Where is it? Okay. So basically, we have seen that with a side sword, what you have to do is to give a opening uh, to the opponent in order to force him to give a trust to that opening. And we can see it with a right, with a right opening, with a left opening, okay, with an eye opening, and even with a low opening. So. Basically, in phrases, uh, you can see each situation. It can happen. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, as I'm afraid to be uh, too much uh, to, to go over the time we have, we will go to the sword and shield, the second part, and then we will try some exercises. So basically, okay. So Marozzo tells us how to defend from a whole weapon when you have a sword that compare it with some kind of shield. And this shows us uh, the same techniques from the for the Rotella. Uh, to a battle, okay. Big battle. He says a big battle, but basically just uh, you know uh, some kind of defensive weapon that gives uh, a good kind of protection because he is going to actively use the shield to parry the thrust from the shield from the spear. Okay. So 
is that once again, this is the, 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 the this is the pages where it says that you have to be brave in order to do these ones. So what he does, he just puts himself in Kodalon Gayatra, which is the same guard we've seen before. Okay. So it's a left opening okay, with the left foot over. This is a smooth guard. Open it is as long as the body. Okay. It is held this way. It's similar to a butter, but with this I can parry the chance with the, the straight side. Okay. It is safer than a butter in this case. In this case. And let's say this user don't so without this word. Okay, so what I'm about to say is that you will put yourself in Coda Longa Alta, which is so this kind of guard, stretto con la tua rotella insieme, which means uh, you will have a tight, uh, you will not give so much opening to the opponent, okay, you will not be like this, but you will bring your rotella together with the sword. Rotella always cover the end, just as the buckler came. Rotella doesn't uh, even use it to parry below the knee, so you have to do something else. So what happens there is that the opening will just give us a last. Okay. What, what we are going to do, we are going to step on the side and just back. Strong mandrito, hard mandrito to the hole. And then we're going to do this in the same, in the same tempo. So we are just moving, pairing, trying to do this in the right way. Okay. Um, if you strike on the legs, the opposite, what you're going to do, you're going to put to do the same thing, but with a false pole. The risposta is just the easiest uh, target to have in that moment. So basically, if it's a nine trust, it's just one. Or, While on the on, while below the terra does just one. Okay. So basically you always remain covered with your shield and you use your shield to take to be sure to trust the outside of your feet. Then we have a second one and uh, my opinion is that, is, is that this, one, this one works better with a smaller ship. What Marx is going to do in this case is to use the ship to uh, move aside the trust in this country. And in the second tempo, he will uh, do uh, um, counter uh, it. So basically, I'm in the same guard. Okay. What, when I see the trust come, what I have to do is just Away the trust, and in the same tempo, what, what, what I do is just I can give a trust under it, or I can just trust. How to say? I just trust. Okay. okay, or even the arms. Okay. If he's fast and I'm not able to. Uh, and I'm not eat him. Okay, so basically, if you trust me when, when I am in this uh, guard, this a porta di ferro lato, basically. Okay. What I have to do in this case is just go up in the falso. Okay, in the third. And... Okay, 
Okay, so even with this kind of weapons, what we see is that uh, we are using the opening once again to uh, let to force the opponent to uh, where I want. And this is obvious in the third one. The last one, then we will do something. In which he says that in this case, what you do is just move your shield slightly to your right sides in order to discover your left sides. Okay. So in this case, I want to. And, uh, and uh, you will be able to strike. From the, uh, to my head, basically, or to the past, to my head. From my own The first step, the weak and the poor wing. And the second, the first thing, barring and from the poor. Second, it's barring. It's very common this kind of uh, uh, oblique uh, diagonal step. Typically. Yes. So basically, we have the same exact thing that we see before. Uh, what happens now simply is that Balotso uh, is uh, just using uh, this kind of opening in order to be able to open, uh, to open the opening. And to open in the opening more than before. Because what we do, we just step in the fancy and we have a So in this case, I am sure that the opponent will hit on, the, on my right side, so I can easily move on his uh, left side. So I will basically jump this. So. And again, this works with the shield without a uh, big shield, but also with a small one. Why? Why is he? Because uh, he is offering a uh, specific uh, plan. First, second one, he uh, doesn't care. He doesn't care about where I hit him because he is parrying up with the shield and downward with the stick and with the, the blade. So he is covered. I'm completely covered. Okay. Oh, it is the same. The, the, his, his movement is the same. Okay, what I do is just use the shield in order to open it. Okay. So, it will not be easy to try these ones. We will try, okay? So, put your mask on. The last part, uh, this is totally by Marozzo, uh, and uh, it's how to use a two-handed sword against a poker. And Marozzo tells us how to use the two-handed sword against uh, any kind of weapon, small weapon. So, partisan, uh, special, and so okay? It's advices for each weapon. And, the sword that uh, Marozzo is using is uh, something like this. So, uh, it's a really big sword, okay? And uh, it also has two guns, okay? And we will see in uh, uh, this kind of discipline that Marozzo shows us how to uh, handle this sword in this way. Very cool. Okay, this is a really interesting part that we will see later. Um, for the sake of simplicity, I will use a feather sweat in order to show you, okay? But just, uh, basically, also the parts are still be long, so we are balancing things, okay? <laughs> so, but just take in mind that this would be the sword that one is using in this case, okay? To us, is that if you have to confront someone that doesn't know how to use a bone weapon, 
or if you have to confront a whole weapon in a uh, frame, okay, then use these advices. Okay. Uh, it shows us three ways of detecting. The first one, it just says, put yourself in the coda longa, in the coda longa in larga, with the left foot only, which is this kind of card. We are in left lead, and this word is like this. So we are completely exposing our right, uh, left sides once again. And this word is on our uh, right side. This is coda longa in larga. From here, we have to uh, understand that the opponent can throw uh, up or down. Okay, can throw a thrust up or down. And Parot also specifies that the opponent will basically only uh, throw uh, a thrust to us, not a cut. Okay. So, what he does, simply, okay. uh, when we see the opponent is giving thrust, what we are going to do is, as usual, move out of the line, okay, and deliver a mandibular to uh, the ball that we land in Porta di Ferro Stretta, eh, larga, sorry, the field. So, something like this. Okay, so we are, we are just going to take down the trust that is delivered to us. Then, he says, if you didn't manage to break the ball, so, in these lines, we can understand uh, how hard you would uh, have eaten the ball. Okay. So, he would hit the ball in order to break the ball weapon. Okay. Uh, so, he just says that if you have it hard, what, uh, whatever uh, the opponent does, he will retreat. And when he starts, when he comes back, we are going to another guard. This basically, uh, this is called water in track. But basically, what he does is just goes under the ball, then he steps on the side and thus delivers the rest. We change the name in color of the lap. So, Okay, so we'll, we will show you from both sides. Just this one. And then it's just this one. The other side. Okay. So this happens if he tries to give a direct trust to me. <coughs> Let's try this. Okay? It is it is is it clear? Do you have questions about this? Uh, I want you to try this now because Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so, okay. so I will show you also uh, how to parry to the legs and then we will try it. Okay, so if uh, he is trying to the legs, but also gives us two opportunities, two, two possibilities basically. So the first one is just parry with the falso, doing a step and a fall. So basically, we step as usual, instead of the thrust, we move out of the line. So we move out of the line. And we just strike with a false one, okay, on the ball, and we fall with the left foot. So it's just this one. Okay. And uh, then we put ourselves in the guard, in the previous guard. Or, if we feel brave, in this case, what we can do is just uh, parry, but crossing our foot. Okay. So in the same way, so this way. And then using this kind of movement in order to charge a uh, hard mandrito. So, what we're going to do is one, two. Okay, it will land in Porto di Ferro. This, this one. Okay, so basically, what we're going to do here is one, 
in order to charge this one. Okay? So we try both this. Facciamo, proviamo a tutti due. We'll show you both again. Okay, so both again. If, it, if it's up high. No. Four. Four. Okay. So sense uh, us to use this kind of technique only against someone who really doesn't use um, a pole weapon. Okay. He's not experienced. Pole weapon. He tells us, but he doesn't explain why. For him, the best guard to have against someone who is wielding a ball weapon is just what they can carry down the bus. This, this kind of guard. So for him, this is the best guard someone should put uh, himself in order to confront someone who is uh, using a ball weapon and actually knows how to use it. And he also tells us that the what the entire of the group just okay. he also tells us that what the entire of the is the best guard uh, to go uh, wrestling, to go grappling with your and it is just why uh, once once I am under this wall I have my hands so I can use this wall to control the weapon to just enter the rest of the club. Okay. Um. Oh, then there is the, the fun part. In the last part, Marozzo tells us a really uh, strange way to control the weapon. He says, we have to put uh, ourselves in Coda Longi Larga, so the same guard we see before. But in this case, it tells us to put the left hand on the pommel and the right hand under the second guard, which I showed you before. So we are going to use this word in this way. And it also tells us that uh, this is good against partisans or spears, but not against spatums. Spiel and uh, uh, Ronka, that is uh, the bill. basically bill. Yeah. Bill. Okay. because they have uh, edges, they have spikes uh, that can or that could hurt our hand. So he just say, says uh, against those weapons, just put your hand, your hand under the, the guard. Okay. So even this way, the opponent. Yeah. Even in this case, the opponent can strike high or low. Okay. If the opponent strikes high, what is the first thing we do? <laughs> move out. We move out of the line. Exactly. So move out of the line. And with the lever. Okay. And. Uh, Soon after, we just follow and we give a thrust to the face or to the chest. Okay. And we continue chasing the opponent if he steps back until he just loses his weapon. So, this is what I want to say. Okay, so basically, one. <laughs> I think you chase him. We will see this. We will see this. Okay, so. It just says also that if the opponent is fainting. Okay, so when you see that your opponent is at the right distance, what you do? You just throw 
one of the clubs to the opponent, you will bury. I will try to bury it. Okay. Okay. Then you just use the other club to throw his uh, spear, take out, throw out dagger and kill him. The, the other side is the same thing. If he parries, but the other side. One of the funniest one that we cannot try. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, this concludes the, the workshop, and uh, I hope you had fun.